Hey there, Alex Kidman with my quick video review of the Lavazza Amore Mio Voicey. It's yet another pod coffee machine from the folks at Lavazza, which they sent to me for review. And it's got one particularly unique selling point, which is that it has Alexa built in. So that's Amazon's voice assistant, for those who don't know. And I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks, drinking a lot of coffee. It's a tough job sometimes. And here are my thoughts on where it excels and, look, where it could be a little better. It does have some problems. So let's get into it. Coffee time. But first, you should hit subscribe. You should hit like. I know every YouTuber says this. Every YouTuber does the same kind of slightly pathetic pleading routine. But, hey, it all really helps. On to the show. Let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so... As a pod coffee machine, I'm just going to dwell on this fairly briefly because I like to do a lot of these and you can get cheaper versions of much the same thing. And they all use the same pods. They all use these little Amoto Mio pods and a little box of them just here. One of the things I do like about that system is they're quite easy to get. So this particular coffee machine has an app. You could use that app to order and reorder and so on and make sure you're consistently stocked up. But they're also really easily available in local supermarkets. I mean, I got this box in my local Coles, nothing particularly special there. And look, as a pod coffee machine, it makes a reasonable pod coffee. And yes, that's a hell of a measured statement because there is definitely still a difference line between what I would call proper coffee and pod coffee. But if you need that caffeine fix in a hurry, then yes, this will get the job done. There's also a reasonable degree of personalization within the app, so you can create your own coffees, different lengths, different heats, that kind of thing. And of course, you can get different coffee pods for different styles and coffee flavors and decaf and all of that kind of good stuff. But of course, the star of the show is Alexa, and you'll note there's a little red ring just here around the machine, and that's because I've got it disabled because otherwise it's going to go nuts every time I say the word Alexa. So it has Amazon's Assistant built in. And the really good big part of that is if you've already got Alexa in your home. If you're already using Alexa for your home setup, for your smart home lights and other devices, then great. This basically just becomes like a little Echo Dot in your kitchen that happens to be a coffee machine. And so you can ask it to control lights and you can ask it to do things like play music or podcasts. Now, I don't want to get a copyright strike against me, but there is one thing that I can do, which is equal parts stupid and awesome in my view, that I can do with this, which should not get a copyright strike. So I'm going to give this a go right now. Let's see how we go. Alexa, play vertical hold behind the tech news on Spotify. Playing vertical hold behind the tech news from Spotify. Resuming the latest episode, Google Pixel 6a review. What foldables does Samsung have in store? Vertical Hold episode 388. And you will one day get his freedom. Alexa, stop. Okay, so yes, that was also a blatant plug for my podcast, which you should also subscribe to. But the point is, of course, I can run that on my YouTube video without too much fuss. But it will also do Amazon Music, obviously. It will also do Spotify. I can't exactly risk those. But all of that works reasonably well. The microphone pickup is reasonably good. And Alexa is a reasonable smart assistant in that regard. Now, what is it that I don't like about this? Well, weirdly enough, the key selling point of this is that you can get it to make your coffee. You can ask it to make coffee. You don't have to push buttons. You can just tell it that you want to make coffee. And in fact, if we look at the instructions or even if we look at the back of the box... I'll try and get this in shot. It says right there that I should be able to say, Alexa, make me a coffee. All right, so this is a fully set up machine. You've seen that it will run the Alexa Assistant. Let's give that a shot. Alexa, make me a coffee. That's not something I can do. Yeah, now that's a problem, isn't it? Because the box suggests I should be able to do it, and yet I can't. Now, the trick with this, the way that you get this to work, is by installing the Lavazza skill in your Amazon account and enabling that, and then it will work if you ask it to ask Lavazza to do it. It's kind of it's a whole process, and it's really, really badly laid out in the documentation for this coffee machine. For 
anyone else who's familiar with Alexa, you're probably aware of the whole skills thing that you generally need to load skills in. And lots of other products that I've seen, they said, yeah, look, you've got to enable the skill. Make sure the skill is working. This does not. And I think that's actually a bit of a problem. But it can work. I'm just going to load a pod into the machine, and then I'll show you how that goes. So here's the pod of choice. We drop that in. There's plenty of water in the back. I'll disable the microphone. I disable muting the microphone, I should say. And then this should work. Alexa, ask Lavazza to make me the Alex coffee. Oh, I need a cup. Vital point in making a cup of coffee. You need a cup yes. for the coffee to go I'm into. I'm switching on the voicing. Your coffee will be ready in no time. Now, no time still takes some time, as you will see. But it does indeed work, and it does indeed make coffee. This is you know, not a bad thing on, in and of itself. Okay, so it's a couple of minutes later, because I like a long black, and the coffee is indeed made, and it's quite reasonable. I am going to drink this as soon as I've finished making this video. But I don't think that voice is a great thing to have on a coffee machine, especially a pod coffee machine. And the reason for this is pretty simple. The most you can do is have one pod loaded in there to then issue your voice command to say, hey, you know, make me a coffee when that works, once you've got the skill enabled. But then you've still got to get up and actually physically get the coffee. And as soon as you're getting the coffee, you're right near where the buttons are, which could make you the coffee in the first place if it understands your voice, if you've got the skill enabled. There's so many little barriers here. And the use cases for this, I think, are very slender. Now, I can see there are maybe use cases for those who have certain disabilities and so on who might be able to grab a cup of coffee but not necessarily operate the buttons or things like that. I suppose there's a small use case there but you're paying a fair old price premium for it. So the official RRP of the Voicey is $349 here in Australia, and that's a lot for a pod coffee machine. Lavazza themselves do much cheaper ones. Now, having said that, at launch, this was a bit cheaper, and I expect that we'll probably see quite a few specials on this because these enabled devices, I'm not going to say the word, it'll start trying to make another coffee, uh, do tend to drop a little bit over time. There's a lot of pressure on them in that regard. The other challenge here, and look, this is just a personal observation one, is I'm not a huge fan of pod coffee because it's wasteful, because you do still end up with all of those pods that you have to dispose of. And yes, there's a certain degree of recyclability, but you're still using power to create the pods, to ship the pods, for me to find them in my local supermarket, all of that stuff. Whereas a bean coffee machine, I'm just grinding down beans and the waste product can go onto my garden without a problem. Your position on that may, of course, vary so who's this best for? Well, look, honestly, if you're already living in an Alexa-enabled household, then yes, I think there is some viability to adding this if you already wanted the pod machine as well in place of having another speaker. Bear in mind, though, that things like the really simple little Amazon Echo Dot often go for ridiculously small sums of money, and you could buy a cheaper, pretty much identical machine and a Dot and have those in play at the same time. Anyway, that's my take on the Lavazza Voicey. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there are, you've got any questions. And as always, thanks for watching. And once again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe.